So today, uh, I want to thank you all for joining. Uh, we're going to take full advantage of your CRM today. So finding the way in which we fully attract visitors from your CRM, whether that be getting them to re-engage or populating new target lists based on those people that you have within your CRM. Uh, it's a pretty cool concept. This is usually where I start out uh, for steps with most of the clients that I do talk to. Uh, I, I am Nathan Gauger. I am one of the research and development specialists here at El Toro. Uh, I also have one of my friends and uh, colleagues here, Joey McSweeney. Uh, we work pretty heavily together on a lot of different projects. Joey, did you, uh, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, like Nathan said, uh, my name is Joey McSweeney. Uh, I'm part of the ad operations team here at El Toro, so I work mostly in product and client support. I also do some data analysis, especially recently as we're as we're working on some projects with all the coronavirus and COVID-19 situation going on. Uh, so yeah, thank you all for being here. We're excited to get into your all CRM and how you can use it and get you all a little bit into the portal as well. So I will turn it back over to Nathan and let him kick it off. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, once again, uh, I believe that we're going to keep questions towards the end. Uh, we find a lot of success doing the questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, they help out a lot with just the general understanding, and it also makes it so that the, the content, uh, people can get through the content and make sure that they do understand it fully themselves. Uh, we'll be answering a lot of questions probably in the middle of this presentation uh, that you may have at the start as well. So feel free to put those questions in if we get to them. Uh, you know, that's great. We, we really appreciate those questions. Uh, one of the very first things that I'm probably going to uh, identify is that there's going to be a heavy misconception here uh, within this presentation where looking at CRMs, you know, you as an agency have a CRM and also agencies have the, the almost responsibility to, to find CRMs of customers and make sure that they're performing well uh, within their marketing campaigns. So this is not just developed for the end client. This is not just a, a presentation developed towards me giving tips and, and ideas for end clients on how they can truly utilize the CRM. This is meant more as a way in how you can utilize El Toro as an agency as well, uh, getting in front of those end clients, which is a, a huge uh, value add, uh, if, if I must say, for the client. Uh, there's going to be many different verticals within this presentation. doesn't matter if you're within political. Uh, you may have to reroute some of the conversations from a typical CRM to a list of databases that you currently have, where you have data stored, address list, and figuring out how to get in front of them. So uh, this may not be immediately, uh, you know, the most applicable for a specific political campaign, but that doesn't mean that the items within here can't be applied in a, a very similar fashion to that of data, which is just held within a database. Awesome. So we're going to do three separate little topics here. First one gonna, is going to be understanding your sales cycle. Second one, setting up the right campaign. And the third one, driving the conversion. Going back in, uh, El Toro itself, I uh, just want to give a brief introduction to El Toro for all those that are new, for those that have uh, joined our webinar and have not been on the past ones, uh, maybe haven't interacted with the sales representatives as well. Uh, we, we exist within a three-point verification methodology. That means that I look at three different points of uh, data, and I look for whether those are consistently occurring. And those three points of data are going to be the IP address, the device ID, and the actual household address. And the idea here is that if I have any one of those three points of data, I can turn it in to the other two points of data. So if I have an IP address, like I put a reverse append pixel on your website. I can take that website visitor and identify the households and therefore also the devices that live within that household. So we can choose to market to the IP address, the router Wi-Fi of a household, or the mobile advertising ID of the device ID. Conversely, through our venue replay processes, I identify a device ID, a mobile advertising ID. And I can reverse that into the IP address being the router Wi-Fi of the household or the household address, meaning that we can market to them on their Wi-Fi. We can still market to them on the mobile advertising ID uh, that we identified 
but we can also perform direct mail to the household address that we identified. And finally, if we do have a household address, I can easily get in front of the devices or the router Wi-Fi of the actual household. This is really built to meet the dynamically changing environment. Uh, you know, we, we don't have a lot of issues that a lot of people are currently facing. Uh, we don't rely on geofencing. We don't rely on people being within a location in real time. We can look back. We have a retrospective look back. So really, the environment today, it doesn't affect us a lot in how we're identifying audiences, uh, but it does allow us to get in front of people in a way that you really need to at the moment through that one-to-one -one targeting. And finally, all of our data collection is cookie free. We have one product here, the simple retargeting that uses cookies. Uh, all of our matching algorithms, everything that we perform uh, as far as the El Toro product itself, products that you can't get elsewhere, is done without cookies. So we've uh, gone through in the past couple of webinars uh, why cookies are bad and or why they might not be sustainable uh, or scalable in certain environments. And this just uh, is, is the reason why El Toro kind of exists is because we don't have to, uh, you know, really depend on cookies as uh, the environmental factor here. So understanding your sales cycle, when is the right time? So there's two different things that I like to talk about within your CRM. And, and the very first step that we're probably going to have to take with any CRM, I don't care if it's subscriber list. I don't care if it's people who have bought in the past. The very first thing that we have to define here is getting it into a way in which I can activate on it through the household address. Since we live in that three-point verif verification methodology, I need that household address or the mobile advertising ID or the Wi-Fi router IP address to get in front of those clients. So the very first thing, if you've got this massive email list, it doesn't mean that you can't use us. It just means that you need to go through a third party and receive an append, uh, basically using that email, email address and generating an address list. There's plenty of direct mailers out there that have those sort of append uh, capabilities. There's also just plenty of data processors that will take on an email address in return with the addresses uh, that they have calculated. So that's, that's going to be our very first step, really identifying all of the different items within your CRM as well that you can utilize. So I wanna see subscriber lists. I like seeing people who have purchased in the past and using those that may have lapsed and not purchased for three years are going to be extremely heavy targets for me to get in front of. And then just general retention plays. So bringing people back to your brand. The items under to understand here is one, you need to understand what sort of retention percentage you currently have. Uh, whenever I was out meeting with a, a very large uh, company that has a very high retention rate, the very first thing that they told me is, hey, we've got 72% retention rate. And I'm like, that's great. And they have a three-month sales cycle. That's great. So what happens if I can get that up to 80%? And they looked at me and said, well, we didn't, we didn't think about that. Well, if I can increase your retention rate to so much higher, your competitors don't get money you have further retention rate. And if you do have that high of a retention rate and I'm just increasing it, it means you don't have to worry too much about making sure that your sales are similar to the previous period. So the higher the retention rate, the better. Retention percentage is going to be one of the hottest items that I look for uh, out of a company, seeing recurring purchases. I also wanna see purchases that led to a second purchase. If you're a furniture retailer, does a lamp mean that you're going to buy a couch? Or does a couch mean that you're going to buy a lamp? Understanding that sort of attachment rate, uh, that's, that's what typically they call it within the industry. So if I purchase that couch, there are, of the people that purchase that couch, 40% of them then go and purchase a lamp. Uh, which lamp do they purchase? Do they purchase a lamp that's the same color? You know, all of those things, uh, it's getting into the data a lot. I understand that but all of those things can help you segment creatives. And based on our ability to get in front of people uh, at the household level, you can use your CRM to generate content, being the creatives, that we can then get in front of those households again. So those purchases that lead to a second purchase can significantly help with retention 
and also identify who need, who you need to get in front of. And then what generated the initial purchase? Was this a billboard? Was this a Facebook ad? Was this an El Toro ad? You know, there's so many different ways, whether was it indirect or direct. This is really where attribution comes in. We, we help with the measurement uh, through our matchback procedures. Uh, but there's there's a lot of ways in which you can identify this through other mediums as well. The idea here is to, one, gain consistent awareness. So this could easily be paired, uh, El Toro marketing could easily be paired with email marketing. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that email marketing is the best way to get in front of people just because of the cost associated with it. And you're probably right. It is a great way to get in front of people. But what I'm going to say is, Email marketing, if that is the only thing that you're performing, you're probably not getting everything out of it that you can. There's a reason why you currently send direct mailers. There's, there's a reason why you currently, you know, buy billboards. There's a reason why you use digital targeting through El Toro. Email is not going to convert everybody. And using multiple different channels can create this omni-channel experience, which is all too important, getting people to convert. And the general marketing campaigns really help maintain those impulse buys. So if I have a consistent brand awareness campaign running, that person says, hey, I need to buy a car. Well, I've been sending XYZ car dealership ads for the past, you know, two years at a, a 10, uh, 10 frequency per month. And now that person always is going to have that car dealership. That's going to be the first car dealership that they visit. And really at, at what is that, 240 ads, uh, I know that the cost for acquisition of a car is a lot more than sending out 240 ads to a person. And getting that person on the dealership is the heaviest sign of intent and, and capabilities to buy as well. So really, you also have the uh, additional item of uh, driving the need. So for me, I always look at a CRM during the uh, holidays, and I say, give me those people that converted three years ago. Those people that did not convert this year, that converted three years ago. We're going to get them back for the holidays. We're going to send them an offer for the holidays. That's usually my very first uh, campaign that I like uh, approaching people with, just because it's easy, it's simple, and it makes sense. So for prospecting, this is the other side to it. You don't know them. But you do know a lot of people that did buy previously. So identifying those people that did buy previously, this is where we get into venue replay. This is where we get into reverse append. This is where we get into digital canvassing, where we can use a lot of these different items to generate an audience that is highly likely. My friend just bought a car. I think we talked about this last week. Digital canvassing, great item to get in front of people. If I know that this specific business has bought five times from me, and I want that sixth and seventh purchase, I'm going to venue replay that building and market to all of those people, or B2B market to all of those people within that specific business. So where do customers congregate? That's gonna be your business example. What drove the majority of those pre previous purchases? That's gonna to be towards the similarity of uh, the matchback analysis that we can perform. And then the people who recently bought from you, that's where we can look at the digital canvassing and finding people that are similar, whether that be demographically or geography based. This is easily paired with billboards. Uh, I use a, a lot of my uh, geography targeting, so zip code tar targeting and com uh, congregation with billboards. So the agencies that I work with will buy a billboard and they'll also look at me and say, hey, I need to have a general presence in the digital atmosphere. So we'll pair together. And that can be using the CRM for identifying where those billboards should be placed, where currently people are buying from. And then once again, during these like highly specific segmented campaigns at critical times, the holidays, you can really generate a further audience from what you already know. So if you have that subscriber list of 20,000 emails, you know, might be worth finding the people nearby if uh, geography is one of the reasons that people may buy. Onboarding, we talked about this last week. We can onboard many different lists. So this is gonna be where you upload a household address or an IP address or a mobile advertising ID and making it into the household address or the IP address, getting it so that you can actually serve to somebody. So we have demographic files that we can upload, email subscriber lists, we've already talked about those. 
past customers already talked about those and those that express previous intent. This can be through the reverse of pin pixel. This could also be just people that have entered your CRM as a, a prospect and never actually converted. And then once again, the differentiation of onboarding compared to most other people, one, fast and accurate. I have typically a 20 minute to a one hour upload time on very on, on relatively large lists. Uh, you know, at max, uh, I think the maximum onboarding time that I've had for a list, it was two hours. And that was a, a very, very large list. Uh, dynamic database, uh, you know, you can use these, these, uh, these data points. The, the idea is like you can get in front of people in a very dynamic way, and it's not something that's statically held. So I'm not gaining this device graph and saying, hey, two months ago, this, this device was associated to this household. I'm looking at it today and saying, this device is associated to this household today. So I don't have that, that lag, that lapse period where the data may be improper. Uh, IP addresses change. That's one of the parts of our system that makes it difficult to do what we do. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't difficult. When IP addresses change, we look to pick up the new IP address that's now associated to that router Wi-Fi. That's, that's El Tor. Once again, cookie lists, already talked about that. And then the agile activation. Since I'm quick, since I'm fast, since I'm accurate, you can actually change your target segment. It's not one of these items where you have to wait two weeks. Uh, your client comes and says, hey, I need to switch this target segment to this one. And you look at them and say, well, we need to pause the campaign for two weeks. And that's two weeks of ads that you can't get money out there on. That's two weeks of ads that you don't have people coming in and buying. That's an issue. With El Toro's system, that 20 minute to one hour upload for almost every list that you can upload, you know, that's, that's really quick and you can just change out those target segments. And it's as if you never even had a downtime. So that's, that's really a beautiful value add, a competitive advantage that we have. So setting up the right campaign, uh, I'm gonna go through a general workflow on this. The source files, once again, we do need those as household addresses, mobile advertising IDs, maids, or IP addresses. Uh, I can almost guarantee that all of the instances that you can think of will be household addresses as the easiest way to upload into our system. Uh, develop the strategy. Figure out, are your subscribers more likely to buy than your past customers? And how long ago should we find a past customer? Should it be three years? Should it be two years? What's the frequency of people buying? Do they buy every three months, like maybe getting an oil change? Or do they buy every week, getting gas at a gas station? Or is it one of these massive purchases where they purchase every five years? I don't know. That's, that's towards the strategy item. We're gonna develop the creatives towards that strategy. So be segmented within those creatives. Don't create one creative. You know, find five different order lines that you would like to upload. Five different types of, of campaigns that you would like to run. Do the A-B test. Find your subscriber list converts better on a X creative compared to the Y creative, while those that purchased previously convert better on the Y creative than the X creative. You know, keep it simple, but also make it segmented and try to find how to get the best result. Create the order lines according to strategy. I'll have Joey show how to do that in one second. Upload source files to allow Toro processing. Joey will show that as well and then deploy the order lines and serve the impressions. Once again, we gotta go back and measure the results. Our matchback analysis is key. If you are not performing the matchback analysis, you are not getting the best attribution channel prop like that is out there right now. There is no better way to actually judge attribution than uploading the address list into our system and identifying those addresses who bought and those addresses who we targeted. So Joey, do you wanna do you wanna take over and uh, you can go through how to create an order line? Sure can. So you all should now be seeing uh, the El Toro portal. Uh, sorry, I have to refresh it real quick. I've been off the page for a little bit. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, the El Toro portal. 
uh, like Nathan said, you know, it's a very dynamic self-service platform. So, you know, we really encourage clients when they get into the portal to come in here and explore and figure out exactly what they can do and what systems best work for them in the portal. So first I'll go through the uh, target section and I'll show you all where you would be uploading those address lists, those CRM files. You would uh, go to this top left corner under the target section, hit upload new file, address list, and this is going to be a B2C address list. Uh, so you see we have several different options here, uh, but this particular instance, this is going to be B2C. So I'm going to hit upload new target CSV. I have a sample address list ready to go. And kind of the, the cool feature here is that it's going to go ahead and go through the quoting process. It's going to go ahead and go through the matching algorithm. And that way, once I set up this order line here in a minute or two, uh, this, this list should be ready to use. So as Nathan was saying, it's a very quick process. You can uh, decide one morning that you want to target a new group of people, upload your list, and be targeting them within the hour. So very dynamic, very agile, and it's all self-service. So this can be done from the client end. So I'm going to uh, walk you all through making a new order line. Now, in terms of the, the hierarchy, the, the naming conventions that we use here, uh, campaigns are, are just housing structures for order lines. But we know there's other services out there where campaigns are actually serving the impressions, uh, but that's not the case here. For our purposes, the campaigns are just the housing structures. They're just organizational tools for the order lines. So I'll come to this campaign, this webinar test one, and I will hit add order line. And I'll name this one of mine also webinar test one. And the order line uh, job ID and PO number, uh, we leave those blank. Those are for your all's purposes. Some of our clients have uh, organizational systems from their companies that they like to maintain in the portal. So if you have any of those internal identifiers or anything of that nature, you can put those into these two spots. We won't mess with those. And then you set the flight dates or how long that order line is going to run for. And then you'll need to select the target type. So for this, it's going to be D2C, but you can see we have uh, B2B, we have our mover product, we have a political option. Uh, so we have, you know, a, a lot of different target types here. I'm just going to stick to the standard B2C banner. Uh, we also do videos, but I will just create the, the standard BDC banner here. I'll hit submit and it will take me to that order line homepage. So the name has already been pulled through. Again, the job ID and PO number would have as well if I had filled those out. And then at the bottom of the details tab here, you're going to put in your impression goal. So you can adjust this by impression. Uh, so right, right now it would be set to serve about uh, 150,000 impressions. We know that some clients aren't really sure exactly how many impressions they want, but they know that they're working with a certain monetary budget. So you can also hit this max budget option and adjust it by the amount of money you have to work with, and it will adjust the impression goal for you. So some clients know that they're going for a certain number of impressions. That's great. You can adjust it this way. Other clients know that they're working with a certain monetary figure, and you can also adjust it that way. So once the details look good, the name, the uh, external identifiers, flight dates, and details, once that all looks fine, you hit save and next. And then we come to the target section of the order line. So I'm going to attach the library and attach the second that I just uploaded here a couple minutes ago. You can also upload a new file right here. So you could come through and upload that file right here and attach it directly to the order line. The only drawback is when you do that, you do have to wait for it to go through the quoting process before you can use this segment. So I always recommend getting that target segment in there a couple of days in advance, or not a day in advance really should be enough. Uh, normally the quoting process is much faster than that, but uh, just in case the system is experiencing a lot of traffic at the time, if you go ahead and get that file in there one day in advance, that'll let it run through the quoting process and it will be ready to use uh, whenever you need to use it. So now that I have my target segment attached, I will hit save and next. And this comes to the creative section of the order line. Uh, this is where you would be attaching creatives and putting in a URL that those creatives will redirect to. So right here, I'm going to hit attach from library. I'm going to come down here and attach a couple of our different creatives right here. 
you can also upload a new file here. So I will also show you that. You would hit upload new file, upload new banner, and I will attach that creative as well. And then you're going to put in your uh, your URL, and that's where all these creatives are going to look back to when they're displayed on the end user's website. So once you have that input, you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, we also do work with UTM codes and Google Analytics. Uh, so you can, if you work with Google Analytics, you can use this feature, it's pretty handy. You would just hit the UTM button here, input your source, your medium, your name, your term, and your content, and it will actually generate a UTM URL for you. Uh, and that will filter information into your Google Analytics account. So that's kind of a cool feature. Uh, you can build those through other websites, but uh, through the portal, you can build it right here internally. So that that's kind of a time-saving feature right there if you work with Google Analytics. So we'll save that, and then we will hit save and next. And then this brings you to the review page of the order line. So this is pretty much just a summarization of everything that we just set up. So you'll see the name, the flight dates, uh, the impression goal and budget, and then you'll come down a little bit further and you can see the target segments that you've attached. Make sure that everything's in ready status. And then you can also see the creatives that you've attached, uh, the URL that's associated to those creatives. Uh, we also do recommend using these top five creative sizes. I've only used one of them, uh, but it's kind of handy. It will show you the recommendations that we would like you to have on this page right here. But once everything looks good, uh, I'm not going to fully optimize it just because this is a dummy order line, but yeah, typically I would be adding those other creative dimensions as well. But once everything looks good, uh, you come down here and you would hit, I acknowledge that this campaign is ready to submit. You would submit that for approval and then that's going to come to my team, the ad operations team. Uh, we're gonna look through it as well. We're gonna make sure that there's no issues with the creatives, no issues with the landing page, uh, that we have the minimum number of targets. Uh, we do have to have 500 residential addresses matched to use this B2C segment uh, just to respect privacy laws. So we're going to double check that all on our end. And if there's any issues, we will let you know so you can correct that and then we can deploy it. Uh, but if everything looks good, we can go ahead and deploy it from our end. And this is normally a, a pretty quick process. So uh, once you submit this order line, you should be serving impressions within a couple hours, uh, definitely within one business day. Uh, it can depend on how long the creatives take to get through audit. Um, but that's normally within one business day. So typically within that one day of submission, you're going to see impression serving. So, and then once this order line is live, uh, like Nathan was saying earlier, it's very dynamic. Uh, you can be, you can attach target segments at any time and they will uh, automatically deploy out. Same with creatives. You can switch the URL at any time. So you can really uh, change the entire order line without ever taking it offline, which is a, a huge value add. So very dynamic, very agile. And once you get around in here and, and use it a little bit more, it becomes very easy to use. So uh, that's pretty much the run through of how you would make an order line and uh, add an order line to an already existing campaign uh, in the portal. Nathan, do you want to uh, take it from there? Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you, Joey. That's uh, it's really fantastic. I uh, I love the idea that, that we do have this as a front-facing portal where we can all uh, you know go through and, and optimize as needed. That's a uh, it's pretty unique as far as the services that are allowed through uh, similar companies to ours. So I think the next thing that we're going to talk about is driving the conversion. So we've identified the entire list. We've got everything that we needed to as far as just generally identifying uh, how we want our list created. And we need to get them to the page. We need to get them to convert. So this very first page, uh, I want you guys to look at all of these creatives, these three creatives over here, and identify which one you would want to serve if you are one of these companies. These are not companies that work with us. These are just examples. Uh, but I just wanted you to look at these real quick. It is great to get your message out there. It is very difficult for me to read the pizza ad. I don't know if it's difficult for you. Keep in mind, these are even larger than how they will show up on the screen in some situations. 
if you have a situation where you have too much literature on a very small creative, it's going to cause an issue. It's going to make it so that people don't click on it. It's great that they have the price down here so large, and it's great that they have their brand. Uh, but similar ads like this really drive home a very specific message and drive greater resonance. So readability is key. It also needs to fit the strategy. You know, if you're trying to get someone to buy a couch, don't put a lamp on the ad specifically. Put a couch and a lamp if you're trying to sell both. You know, generate the creative as if you want it to go all the way and you want this to be a customer that is going to be retained and potentially a full-time customer as well. The action item needs to be very specific too. It needs to have a learn more or shop home or down here, we deliver all day. You know, these types of action items make people want to click. This shop now over here. If you don't have an action item, people have no reason to click. There's a lot of people that don't understand that you can click on an ad and it goes directly to the page that you want it to go to where you can actually purchase. So putting that shop now makes them know that they can click on that ad, go straight to the website. And the offer needs to be relevant. If you don't have an offer, people don't have a reason to click. Uh, that could be a 50% off offer. That could be a 30% off offer. That could be a buy one, get one free. There needs to be some sort of offer that really drives the, the person to get in front. And then this one, you're seeing free shipping. You're seeing the uh, lower price pizza and then the keep your phone. There, there's so many different ways in which to drive an offer and drive someone to click. The website needs to be easy to convert. Uh, I have had the unfortunate experience of running a campaign in the past where there was no path to conversion that was simple. The easier it is to convert, the more conversions you're going to get. Uh, so a lot of people will ask, well, what do you expect the ROI? I don't know. I don't know what an ROI is going to be on a campaign, but I can tell you that it's not going to be high if it's not easy to convert. Also, your website needs to be simple needs to have the, the action item. Over here, uh, you're looking at, so this is where all of your content is. In this uh, situation, we're looking at what is Jet's Pizza. And it's, uh, once again, these are not clients of ours. These are just examples. This is a great place to put literature. This is where you want someone to convert. This is where you want someone to understand the entire process. Pizza is a pretty easy process. So you can see how much literature they have here. They didn't need all of that on their creative. The creative is supposed to inspire someone to go to your website, not to give them all of the details. So you get them to the website. Now it's time to find out what exactly they want. And then make sure it fits the strategy. If your website doesn't fit the strategy, make the creative and the website coherent. You know, they work together. If they're not similar in nature, if they don't have some sort of theme, if they don't have some sort of strategy that is similar, I don't want to send someone with a 50% off coupon to buy breadsticks if I'm a pizza restaurant and then put pizza all over the page. And yeah, I want them to buy pizza, but I also want them to see the breadsticks that got them to actually come to my page. So maybe having a unique landing page would be a good item there. And you want to upsell them. Hey, you get 50% uh, off breadsticks, but you also got to buy a pizza with it because who eats breadsticks without pizza, unless you're at you know, an Italian restaurant. Converting on the offer, make sure that they're easy to remember codes. 58213, uh, I can ask for those numbers later in the presentation. You probably aren't gonna remember them. Keep in mind that these ads, someone needs to click through and then remember the code. So what was that number that I just mentioned? You probably remember it right now. Let's go down. Let's, at the end of this presentation, I'll ask that exact same question again. If you remember it, great. You were thinking about it. Most of you probably will not remember it. So easy to remember codes like pizza tent, if it's a 10% off coupon. Offer attached on click through. If you have the ability to have the offer attached to a specific web page, have that offer landing on that specific web page. And that should automatically apply on checkout. If you require people to remember codes, I can guarantee you, you offer someone a 50% discount on XYZ item, they go to buy XYZ item and it's at full price, I can guarantee you they aren't gonna buy. 
So it's, you already generated them on your website. Great. Make sure that they can convert. And don't make it something as simple as, hey, I forgot the code, therefore I'm not going to buy. That's, that's not a great way to look at it. So generally, uh, we always go through a case study. Uh, this is a specific case study that used a CRM uh, of past donors. So this is a, a nonprofit. This is on our website. And this is Cosair Charities. So the idea here, we have a whole lot of people who are past donors, people who have not donated today and people who have not donated this year, but they donated two years ago, a year ago, you know, three years ago, generating all of that data into households. You have their household address since they donated, getting in front of them in a meaningful way can actually develop further donations. And that's great. In this situation, we donated uh, what we sent creatives over uh, and served ads for Coast Air Charities to their previous donor list. And it increased the average donation by 172%. There's $52,000 in donations that we influenced, and that made an 11% conversion rate. These are already highly likely people to convert. These are people that we, if we can get more of them to convert, there is a much greater percentage of them and therefore greater list. $52,000 on a, a general campaign for donations is massive for a charity that, you know, could do millions in, in, in revenue from the donations and, and millions in giving. Uh, there's a lot of great opportunities within the nonprofit world uh, while also looking at, you know, those for-profit entities. So I've named a couple down here. Uh, you've got Sullivan University. One of the best ways for Sullivan University to actually market with our system could be Venue Replay, but it could also be looking at their current CRM, those people that have applied online and that maybe haven't made the choice. They've been accepted, but they haven't paid the deposit. And these are people that have been accepted. We're just waiting for their money. And we need to get that as quickly as possible, you know, time value of money. So getting in front of that client list could be huge. Also understanding what clients in the past may be looking for additional degrees or those that may not have finished out the degree that they were looking for and now we want them to come back. Those are all things that are heavily applicable within using your CRM and getting in front of people. Louisville Bats is another organization. You've got all of these ticket sales. Uh, I personally have worked with a couple of NFL teams uh, along with a, a couple of other professional sports teams. and. The very first thing that I asked them for, I need to know who your past purchasers are. I need to know who purchased a season ticket last year. I need to know who purchased a season ticket three years ago. And using that, I could see those who currently have season tickets, those who don't, I can get in front of those individuals. At the same time, I can also create some sort of a demographic profile and, and understand who are the most likely prospects and where are they from that I can get to convert. Very easy campaigns for us to create. Uh, very little data manipulation, very, uh, it's not time intensive on your side either. It, it's relatively easy. Uh, but just generating these campaign audiences uh, for us to get in front of them in a very meaningful way and, and developing that season ticket uh, by it. Finally, Delta Dental. I like to use this as a, a B2B example. And, and a lot of people, probably don't see uh, business addresses being heavily applicable within our system, but I can tell you it's one of the most fun campaigns whenever, you know, people do upload a B2B segment and, and serve specifically to all those business addresses. Delta Dental is a great, uh, you know, example of that. Sell dental insurance. Well, I've got a group of companies that currently use my dental insurance. And let's say that you have a 40% use ratio uh, so 40% of all of the employees actually are signed on to Delta Dental's plan. And you know that they're going through active enrollment right now. Great time to get in front of them. Send them, send them some ads, you know. Send uh, maybe 100,000 ads or 200,000 ads per business. And just try to increase that from 40 to 60. And, and that increase itself, that'll retain over time. People will stay on that insurance because people don't change their insurance as often as what we would like them to. Uh, but there's there's a ton of reasons why getting in front of that uh, would be a great campaign for any insurance 
uh, salesperson. And then finally, political. We had this come up on our last meeting for onboarding. Uh, political, it might be more based on a demographic profile or those who have previously voted. Uh, I know political campaigns don't call them CRMs as often. Uh, but this is a great opportunity just to get in front of the people that you already know that already have a high propensity to vote for you or vote for the issues that you're trying to get in front of. So just applying these demographic items, doing what you already know how to do, onboarding through our system, extremely easy way. Going through some of the frequently asked questions, uh, I believe most of these were on from last week. So uh, I'll, I'll there's some of the, uh, the long-winded answers here. But are there any minimums? Yes, we require 500 matched targets along with a 30,000 impression minimum. So if you have 500 matched targets, so you probably have to upload a list, it's around 800 targets to get 500 matched. And you also have the 30,000 impression minimum. You can serve on our platform. We also do require a 300 by 250 creative for display advertisements. Uh, that's just so that we can make sure that the inventory is accurately served to the entire population. 300 by 250 holds around 80% of the inventory, uh, 70 to 80% of the inventory as it relates to uh, display advertisements at the moment. How long does it take for us to get the results of a list upload? Uh, this is something that me and Joey already answered within the previous slides. Uh, typically 20 minutes to an hour is our processing time. Uh, in most cases, I, I have not had a list uh, that lasted for more than two hours. Uh, in times where there's a lot of things going on, uh, let's say it's political season, and it's the very last day, uploading that list a day early can make sure that your list is done by the time that you're actually trying to serve. Uh, but in most cases, you can upload many addresses and they'll be quoted in less than an hour. What fields are needed to upload a list? Once again, this goes back to the three-point methodology. I need the household address, being the address one and zip code field. I need the mobile advertising ID if you're trying to serve devices. And I need the IP address if you're trying to serve uh, to, the to the specific IP addresses with that household being identified. So any of those three, all good to go. Uh, how is your matching process different from competitors? We don't use cookies. That's going to be the main one. We have these issued patents, which basically make us the only ones within the marketplace that is that are doing what we are doing. Uh, our competitors may claim to be similar. They're not. Uh, they may be doing similar processes and similar deliverables, uh, but they are not doing the same thing that we are doing. Uh, El Toro is is one of a kind, so it's it's kind of a nice company to work for, to be honest. But uh, you know, if you ever have any of those questions, please reach out to a sales rep. If you ever get into one of those uh, you know little quarrels where you're trying to fight for what's the best option, let us at least identify how we're different, and you can let the other competitor identify how they're different as well, and then we can look at moving that forward. And then, what are the typical match rates for onboarding? At the moment, I have around a 70% match rate to any household address that you upload within the United States to the actual IP address. And that's, that's on average. So if you're uploading a lot of things within one area that we have a lower match rate, you're gonna have a lower match rate. But for the most part, uh, it's pretty close to 70% for every single area within the United States. Finally, uh, looking at the data and compliance, uh, we are compliant with all U.S. laws. We don't have to worry about those laws that exist within Canada, Mexico, Europe. Uh, we do not comply with GDPR because we exist within the United States. So if you ever have a client that's looking for compliance within the United States and they want to serve ads within the United States, more than happy to take that. But if you're looking for things to serve in Europe, that's where we will not come in uh, because we do not process and we do not look for data in Europe. Wrapping up, I uh, just want to go over, uh, you know, basically what was talked about within this webinar once again. Uh, making the CRM database accessible and agile are going to be a major value add that you can perform for your clients or you can perform for yourself. Uh, whenever you have the ability to get in front of people through an omni-channel resource, that is huge. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of omni-channel. 
uh, getting in front of people through email and through El Toro is a winning strategy. Getting in front of people through direct mail and El Toro, winning strategy. Uh, using one point of reference and using one medium to get in front of people, uh, it works, but it could be better using multiple mediums of, of getting in front of individuals. Develop the strategy and act creative assets. So once you have this list of agile data, create the uh, creatives towards the specific strategy that you want to get in front of them with. So if you're trying to sell a car, sell them the car that they were looking at. Don't sell them the car that they weren't looking at. We sell them at a, on a Ford lot. You know, you should sell them a Ford car uh, or put a Ford car on the insurance. If you're trying to sell insurance, put a Ford car saying, hey, you need vehicle insurance. There's a whole lot of ways to look at that, uh, but you need to get in front of them in a meaningful way or at least make it similar to, uh, to how they are actually in that interacting with your environment. Upload targets and two order lines, which fit determine strategy. So that's just simply what Joey did. It's, it's getting in front of them and actually uploading it into the portal properly, uh, making sure that you have those multiple order lines that are created and getting in front of them in a segmented way so you can A-B test those as well. And then once you've created your order line, influence them through advertising. So that's just deploying, that's getting those impressions out, that's doing the matchback, that's getting all the optimizations through. Awesome. Well, I do want to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, I think Joey and I are going to start looking at the questions. Uh, Joey, are you still there? I am. I am. Uh, yes. Yes, I am pulling up the questions now. Uh, so the oh. first question that I see is, do you have a minimum quantity for business addresses? And the answer to that is no, we do not have a minimum quantity for business addresses. Uh, as long as we have one matched business address, we can serve that. Uh, there's not the same privacy laws with respect to businesses. So, yeah, as long as we have one matched business address, we can do that. Ten matched business addresses, that's fine. We don't need that 500 like we need with consumers. Uh, and then I see the question, does the creative approval occur nights and weekends? Uh, yes, creatives do get approved uh, over nights and weekends. It can be a little bit slower sometimes. Uh, a lot of that also depends on the, simply the volume of traffic that our DSP is getting, uh, but those creatives do still get audited uh, and ran through the system over the weekends and overnight. Awesome. And then we did not have a lot of questions today, but it uh, looks like the last question that we have, uh, can you record and share this? All of these webinars that we have done for the past four weeks now are available over uh, the other um, over YouTube. So if you're interested in getting these webinars uh, from previous weeks, just log in. YouTube has them. Uh, we have sent out all those links to those that have attended the webinars. Awesome. So it looks like we can uh, we can end a little bit early. Here, one more one more uh, question. Who owns the mailing addresses? You know, Sal, that's uh, that is you. Um, if you if you have a mailing address, we have an NDA in place where we are not going to communicate that over. We are not going to look at it and say, you know, hey, you've given us this address list, so we're going to go and send it to 50 other people. That's not what we do. Uh, whenever you sign that NDA, anything that you send through our system is yours. So it's no, it's not ours. Awesome. Before we uh, here, I, I do want to just add that we also do have uh, weekly webinars, weekly walkthroughs every Thursday. Uh, if you're interested in that, please reach out to our team and we can get you into the uh, weekly portal walkthrough uh, where you can get a little bit more familiarity with our portal and our services. So if you're interested in that, please reach out. Awesome. You all have a great day. And uh, if there's any further questions, feel free to reach out at, El, at info at eltoro.com. And uh, we'd be happy to answer any of the questions that you may have uh, and pair you with a sales rep if needed. Once again, the deposit is waived for those that have attended the webinar. So if you are interested in running ads on El Toro services, just reach out to info at El Toro.com, identify that you are on the webinar, and uh, you know we can push that forward into, uh, into some good advertising.
Y'all have a great day.